Hello everybody. <clears throat> How are we doing tonight? So let's get this party started. I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> a lot of projects needing uh, needing some tending tonight. And a lot of stuff getting towards deadlines, unfortunately. Let's uh, shine a little bit more light on this situation if I can. That didn't really help out much, did it? Oh well. We'll just kind of work on through it. So the first thing I want to tackle is I want to get this guy out of its mess. So I did manage to successfully print the Star Trek uh, Galaxy Class Dreadnought, but as you can see, it is covered in supports. And it is time to make that all start going away and reveal the beauty of this ship and actually see if it printed right because that is the fear oh. this is probably the most sometimes it's the most satisfying part <laughs> because you're getting the break stuff but sometimes it's the most scary part too as you take off these supports and fear that something's gonna break and you can tell this is supports done right because of how easy they're just coming off Hopefully you guys are been having a good week so far. This one's this week's been pretty darn good to be honest with you. <laughs> oh. Always the scary part. I'm always wondering what am I going to break. All right, time to pull out the bigger guns. That I ah, I moved them. <laughs> So hopefully we're having a good week out here. If I can get this out of the supports, it's a big printing success. The camera's pointed went down way too far, ain't it? There we go. We'll, uh, we'll have us a Galaxy Class Dreadnought. Figure out where the connection ring is here. There we go. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> oh. Oh, 
Uh, this one is, well, as soon as I get this support off, Sometimes the best part and sometimes the scariest part. Sometimes patience is your best friend when doing that. When doing this. All right. There's another big chunk out of it. Out of it. And there she is. Have a little bit of fixing to do back here, but we've almost freed it from the supports, and it shall have freedom. Well, there we go. So this one is lengthwise a solid 15 inches and widthwise we are solid 12 inches and height about five inches tall. So a pretty good size ship here. Details came out beautifully. I've got my windows in the sections. Lost some of the cross sections, but I can fix a lot of that with paint where the grooves are. Uh, the impulse engines came out in a pretty good state. I'll have to do some cleanup in the impulse engines a little bit. Nothing that can't be easily fixed or trimmed up. Photon torpedoes came out. Launchers came out really well. Yeah, this one came out really, really well. So we will, uh, we will save this guy for another week for the rest of it, but I did want to get it shown because I'm actually really pleased with the outcome of this model because the Galaxy classes can be uh, a pain to print. And this one was no different because of the third nacelle. Uh, this is where I kept having errors was on the nacelle. And I basically had to take the custom supports and kind of cocoon it to actually get it to build. And once it built, it built just fine. Except for the backs right here, but nothing a little bit of sandpaper and uh, a little bit of trimmers won't fix. So, and I can even see the line indentions for the windows and the saucer. So we can even get those in there after a little bit of smoothing. So all in all, this is going to be a beautiful model once it's done. I'm actually, so one thing I've been working on, and you guys will see the video of the Saturn S come out this weekend. But basically, this is a nine inch long Excelsior class print that came out. I know it's not gonna zoom in on the details. I need to get a different camera over here. But the details on it are just fantastic of how it came out. And then I've gotten my Photon Mono X working where even this Voyager, which is nine and a half inches, came out with some really exquisite detail. 
it needs a, a soap bath before I start painting it. Same with that Excelsior class, Enterprise B variant. But these are going to be really nice models. What I'm thinking about doing is doing a bunch of a ship line uh, with these <coughs> with these resins in that nine or ten inch um, size. So, as always, before you move on to the next part, I clean up my big mess here. I'm sure to save the big mess for the end, shouldn't I? Ugh. All right, let's get this mess cleaned up. All right, now I got to get to the real work. Because <laughs> I've been working on getting uh, one of my Boba Fett's ready to paint. Really liking the metallic cover. I don't know if I'm going to actually take him to a Boba Fett. I may leave him more of a Mandalorian style. I've got this Mandalorian resin print that I've put into... Uh, this is Citadel's Lead Belcher. Is the color that I'm going to keep for the metallics. And start going over with the cloth and I made a just a base. And I plan on gluing him onto the base to give him some more statue look to it. But hopefully we'll get to maybe painting them here in a little bit. But that's not what I got to work on right now. So I am running out of time on this Batman project. So we got to get that done. That means... Painting on the Batmobile. <laughs> Mainly what I need to get done is I need to do a little bit of graying in the machinery here. I need to come in with a different color for the windshield. And then uh, some red for the taillights and some yellow on the front here. So I've got quite a bit of painting to do. Actually, I've got the same thing i got to do um, with the animated series Batmobile. But I need to come in with gray on the grill, the piping and then come in here with the yellows and reds on the back. So, got a lot I gotta do. A lot I gotta do and not enough time in the world to do it, right? Isn't that how that usually works? So, I want a nice vibrant yellow. So I'm gonna use actually deep yellow from AK. So, uh, to really kind of pull out all the yellows, use my handy dandy paint shaker here. Give it a couple shakes just to be on the safe side. And of course, we need to pull out the handy dandy wet palette. Which you guys can see I've been doing a whole bunch. <laughs> All right, let's get some of this yellow. This nice looking yellow. All right, because we're going to use it on quite a few things. So I don't want to set that too far away from me. And I want to get good brush that I have buried all my brushes like a crazy man. Oh, desk is a bit disorganized tonight. Sorry guys. This is the brush I have been using. What do you mean, Douglas? What do you mean by such a life? Hey, two-a-day builds. Oh, you mean the organi disorganization? Yeah, I'm pretty disorganized tonight. I didn't get home till really, really late. And now, trying to 
get in the zone to get my other work done. But we're cruising on through. Well, sometimes, I'm not going to do this on stream, but sometimes when I'm painting like this and I've got a lot i got to get done, I actually have a hair dryer <laughs> that I would uh, um, sit here and I would dry this paint real quick so I can do multiple layers. But I'm not doing that on a stream because that's extremely loud and you guys would not enjoy that. So... I'm going to use the same yellow back here for the turn signals. Because even Batman, the Batmobile is street legal, except the fact that it, you know, spews fire. <laughs> uh, I'm coming the thruster here with some yellow to kind of start pulling that in. And start getting that flame going on and you guys noticed and I'll show you on the second one here <clears throat> I came in beforehand and I, pr I put this all into black then I came back beforehand a few hours ago and I put white down where the yellow is going. Uh, so the yellow um, will sit on top of the white and get just give a better shine. Now some of that black is still gonna pull through underneath the white. So it's just, I have to do some coats for the yellow to uh, stand out. But if I had not put the white, the yellow would not be standing out anywhere near what it is right now or going on anywhere near smooth as it is so that's always a good trick if you're going to be painting a light color uh, over a dark color come in with a you know come in with a white or something like that or something or a different yellow to give this the base so it can't the yellow will be brighter yellows and golds are I don't know you guys may agree with me you may not uh, golds can be, yellows and golds can be some of the hardest colors to paint. And get them to look the color they're supposed to. <clears throat> golds are usually ones that drive me nuts. But you can see having that white there, that yellow definitely is a, a good pop compared to what it probably would have been. All right. <clears throat> so that's those two. Well, let's move on to other stuff. What kind of project are you guys all working on out there in the world today? I know I'm working on a lot of Batman stuff at the moment, but that's where the current commission is. So that's what I'm working on. Or does anybody have any printing questions or anything they'd like they want to go over tonight and talk about?
I got these backwards, but no, I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, your order is uh, definitely on the on the way. Uh, the Cerritos is really cool, Dirks. Um, actually, I'm gonna set that down for a minute. <clears throat> I don't know if you caught the stream where I showed this one off, but if you saw the last episode of uh, Lord X, there was the new newish Excelsior class, the Odina class. So I've gotten that one printed out I've got some still a little bit of cleanup doing but it came out really really well uh, hopefully maybe this weekend get this one into primer and get it uh, start getting some paint laid down on that but unfortunately there this Batman project is in front right now And this is only the first coat of yellow that I'm going to put on. But you can see, even with just the, this being the first coat, that color is going on really, really well. Yeah, the Udina is uh, definitely looks like a beefed up Excelsior, but uh, I don't know. Kind of looks like they just kind of took a Sovereign class and an Excelsior class and had a baby. All right. So that one is done. I got one more of those. don't really have a whole lot of yellow thankfully not like the Batmobiles do but definitely putting that bright lighter color underneath is giving the uh, the yellow a good foundation so always kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at a color to put in here so a lot of times what I'll do is like uh, Um, what I'll do is like gold I will actually do a layer of brown of brown underneath it and then come in with the gold on the gold paint on top of it and it gives it a really good uh, good layer so, whoops. so kind of one of those neat little tips and tricks to getting a bright color on top of a dark color is the uh, the good old bright matte white um, I used army painters uh, matte white and you guys can see it really pops against the black We are, well, we're almost done with yellow. We're done with the Batmobiles in yellow anyway, for now. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, this is a red grass wet palette, this bigger one, but I also use the Army Painter uh, wet palette as well. Well, my wife has my Army Painter one right now. She was painting some some uh, ornaments that I made for her. So she's using that one at the moment. Just a little bit of painting on the bat wing. Good, good layer there. There we go. And you guys can see this. So this is the 1989 variant of the Batwing. And then at the same time, I did the variation on the animated series Batwing. So and they all kind of came out really, really well. Just got a little bit of work to do to them, and uh, <clears throat> I will uh, be done with them. So done with the yellow at the moment. Clean my brush. So one thing too, guys, if you're willing to spend a couple of dollars, and you guys can't really see it, but the Citadel paintbrush cup, there's actually ribs at the bottom of the cup and then uh, you see these grooves so you can take your brush drag them against the ribs and knock the paint out then you bring your brush up and it helps put your brush back into the point uh, these run about eight dollars they are worth the investment so so there the Michael Keaton bust I tried to make one it's actually down in the denatured alcohol bath right now. It did not get finished in time. Happens. All right. I am going to try the canopy glass with Pro Acryl's dark silver. Now, if this doesn't work, oh, what other colors could I try? Because I want to give it kind of a black, I want to keep the black appeal but I want to give it a silverish look. So I'm going to try this first, at least on one. It's acrylic. It'll come right off if it doesn't work. So I'm not horribly out anything if it does not work. But you guys can tell I really like the dark silver. I use it quite a bit. Uh, especially against black, it can give it's just enough silver, but it's dark silver that it gives a really nice hue of appearance. It's not as bright as gunmetal, but it's not dark as black. It's kind of one of those things. I've got multiple, so I can make each one a little bit different. But I'm just going to try to find out what color works really well for that kind of tinted glass, black shade. And I think this is actually going to stand in really, really well <clears throat> for that color. And the cool thing about Proacryl paints, a little bit goes a long, long way. I just realized I don't have that in view, guys. I'm sorry. I'm 
but you can see it just kind of makes that one side pop out just a little bit. And that's what we want. We want just a little bit of pop, not enough pop to make it look completely wrong. I'm actually liking the look that I'm seeing here. So I'm going to keep going with it. Take my time, small overlapping brush strokes to try to remove any overlapping look. And just take my time to get the outer seam line laid down. And I could tape this off and do all that and even airbrush it, but in a matter of time, this is probably, I'll probably spend the same amount of time, but once I'm done, I'm done. So I'm kind of I don't know if the light's letting that reflect through, but you can see that darkened silver definitely lets the, uh, the glass separate. I'm actually going to come in with the same silver down here and uh, kind of just give some highlight on this machinery. Just kind of offset it a little bit. Not going to do a huge amount to it, just kind of give it a little bit of difference to the rest of the model. Just to kind of give it a highlight and a little bit of offset. I may come back in with another silver, mix it in, mix a brighter silver in to give this another, um, a hi another highlight. But it's just close enough that an off enough of black that it gives a gives a beautiful look. I, I feel it does anyway. kind of make that stand out one down uh, I thought about it but just hitting it with a, a normal silver with a, a wash I just don't feel like it would tone this down enough so that's why I'm kind of I'm really kind of feeling the dark silver here um, because it's got the dark tone to it and if this wasn't dark enough then I feel like I probably could get a nice darker look um, with a wash but a bright silver I think would just be too bright with this one but my that's my opinion that's not the rule so always keep that in mind what I say is not always the rule, it's just my opinion and how I feel about it. And we are all entitled to our methodologies and what works.
trying to stay in the lines. <clears throat> trying to stay in the lines and make this one look pretty. Sorry guys, sometimes I don't talk a lot, I get it. Really concentrating on my painting. Especially when I'm doing these cut-ins like this. So is everybody excited about this week, about the new season of Star Trek Picard? Yeah, mine doesn't have a grill. I'm going to paint that in, to be honest with you. Or I may just paint it gray and just call it good. Um, it's something with the model that it didn't have the grill. So, boo. Just didn't have time to fix it. And I thought about th using a 3D printing pen and cleaning and putting a grill in. But I don't think time's on my side to uh, accomplish said task. That and getting the wheels figured out on this one was a, a pain. So what I had to do is in Cura, there's a reverse option. So I had to put two wheels in normal and then put two wheels and print them as reverse to get the threads to work correctly. That was a bit of a disappointment to print four wheels and then realize I couldn't use two of them. curious to see what uh what goes on in Star Trek Picard I want to get a look at the design of the new Stargazer I'm kind of curious to see what that ship's going to look like because uh yeah probably if it looks cool at all it'll probably definitely hit my uh my paint list my print and paint list But other than that, not a whole lot new coming out show-wise. I know we've got the new Batman movie coming out on Friday, which is also cool. I don't know much about this one, so I'm kind of curious to see how this new one's going to be. Because I feel like over the years... We've had good Batmans, we've had bad Batmans, we've had good Batmans again, and then bad Batmans, and we keep reinventing the wheel. So, here's a question. What's your favorite Batmans? Throw them out there in the chat. What's your favorite one? I'm torn between Michael Keaton, 
Keaton's Batman and uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Batman Begins Batman. I can't think of his name at the moment. What is his name? Although Val Kilmer's wasn't horrible, but you know, there's always a there's always that one bad Batman that shouldn't have been out there. And I'm curious to see what are you guys is what is your favorite? Who's your favorite Batman? Who's your worst favorite? Let's throw them out in the chat and see what we got going on. I'm kind of curious. Ah, I got a Keaton fan, Osab. Hearts in the chat for you on that one. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I agree with the actor they've chosen, but I it's not fair to judge until uh, I watch it. So if it's going to be good or not. Now are we back to the classic story where it was... Uh, <clears throat> the Joker that killed his parents, or are we doing a different storyline? I'm kind of curious. I know the camera doesn't show the contour, the distinction that well. That angle kind of does. You can see that dark silver in there, kind of augmenting the pipes, and then into the wheels with the main hubcap. I'm going to come across with a different gray um, for this outer part to accent the wheel, but <clears throat> it's all in good fun, right? Clooney? Yeah, I can see Clooney. Uh... I could see Clo Clooney being Clooney and Val Kilmer definitely were good Bruce Wayne's. Um, Batman Forever holds a spot in my heart because I thought um, Jim Carrey was just spectacular. Christian Bale was really good too, but I don't know. I'm a Keaton boy. I don't. I don't know if you can beat Michael Keaton as Batman, considering, you know, after all these years, he's coming back to the role in the TV shows. Ugh, kind of says something. But uh, it can't say too much, because you got Tobey Maguire and all them coming back to... Coming back to it and coming back to Spider Man and all that kind of stuff, and it's kind of hard to uh, give fair judgment to any of the uh, any of the actors who did it because some of it's not the actor's fault. I think they could have done a really good job with Clooney's film. Um, If they dropped the humor and a lot of the unbelievableness, we got into that artsy fartsy comic book looking Gotham City, and I think a lot of that ruined it. Where we lost a lot of the seriousness uh, that we saw, like in Batman Begins, and that where you know it wasn't about weird, funky antics and weapons and all that. It was just <clears throat> it was just Batman. So it became about actors' names and not the actual character. That's just my opinion.
<clears throat> but okay, with favorite Batman, uh, favorite movie, because Keaton did multiple, Val Kilmer and Clooney only did one, Affleck did a couple where he was the Batman, and then, yeah, Danny DeVito as the Penguin was, was well acted and horrifying at the same time, but also had a comedic response to it. He made the, in my opinion, you know, I always used to seeing the Penguin in the uh, Adam West show, TV version of Batman. Because uh, he always looks so prim, proper in his little tuxedo. And then we got Danny DeVito's Penguin, who was dark, demented, tortured. And just kind of working across those contrasts were always kind of an interesting uh, interesting feel because even Catwoman I mean she was brutally mean where like Adam West I mean I know it was a, a sitcom TV show and all that and they couldn't do too much crazy stuff except run around with a bomb over his head and not want to kill a duck I mean that was that was that was good Adam West was a good Batman he was the Batman I mean, if you come down to it, he's where it started. He is where it began. Kind of wondering, was there a Batman before Adam West? Or was it just the comic books? Tim Burton's. He was the first on TV. Yeah, Tim Burton, a lot of his stuff that he directed is good. Some of it creeps creeps me out a little bit. Uh, he made really good stuff. Really, I'll have to go look that one up. I didn't know there was a Batman in the 40s. Got me curious. so many models oh that was new
So, I'm going to go back and talk about a topic we talked about on a prior stream. I got one comment about Stargate. So, I found a model from Stargate. It is not a Stargate that I've decided to print that's kind of off the beaten path from what other people are doing with that show. So I've got it on the printer right now. It's it's still printing. Uh, I actually just started it yesterday. But I got to looking around. I was like, you know, there's the Jaffa and all that kind of stuff. Oh, Dick Tracy. Man, I haven't heard that name in a long time. So with the Stargate one, I didn't go with the humans. I didn't go with the Jaffa. I actually found a model for the Asgard, the O'Neill class battle cruiser. So Thor and all his little buddies, I actually found a really cool model some that was being worked it's still a work in progress, but the model actually looks beautiful. So I've actually got it going on a printer right now. Actually, once I finish with this one's canopy, we may hop over there and take a look at it. I was hoping to have some of more of the Batman busts done, but they just didn't quite make it to the stream tonight. Probably because I had to go out. But I had to go out because duty called and work called and I had to go do some stuff for work. So, but that's starting to really kind of get a little look to it. Get the canopy. I'm gonna come back in here and in these engine slots come in with some gray and kind of offset them kind of like they've been, you know, jet engine burnt. So, yeah, these are coming along quite nicely. Still got two more that I need, three more, two more, three more that I need to do the silver on, but I don't want you guys to get bored either. Oh, a model of the Asgardian himself. Let's hop over here. Need to hit the right button. All right, here we go. So I've already added my custom supports, but you guys can see this model is actually quite well done. There's a lot of good detail for an FDM model with all the guns and just the surface detail, the rock inlay detail. I know it's kind of fuzzy on the screen. Uh, get all my way tools. As you can see they put in the inlays and that into the structure. The engines are kind of me, but it was an Asgardian ship. Uh, but all in all, it's a beautiful model. I think it's going to come out really, really well. So, actuality, if I go here, I go here. You guys don't need to see my email. Oh, here it is. We're coming right along. So I'm using a CR10 V2 to print it. So 
it is uh, coming right, right along. And the Halo ring is coming along very well. But let's go find this model. I just searched Stargate. Will I eventually tackle one of these? Probably. Uh, this is on the list, the BC-304. I looked at Atlantis and I'm not totally sold that I want to tackle that. Although I didn't, don't remember seeing that one, so that's maybe a comeback too. But um, I also want to do one of the F-302s. Where is it? The Jaffa ship model looks fantastic. It just doesn't really hit that interest to me. Here it is. So on this link will go down in the description below. Uh, tomorrow at some point I will get it in there. But the O'Neill class uh, ship from Stargate. And you guys can see the mo when he made it, it came out really well. So I am on the, uh, the same road to, to attempting to make this model. So hopefully we'll see a really cool paint job. We'll get to do some really cool, uh, really cool paint on that one. But whoop, go away, Mac. There we go. But as you guys can see, we're, we're a good chunk of way through it. We're already 46% complete. So keep an eye on Instagram. And if you don't follow me over on Instagram, it's Rise3D Printing. Rise 3D Printing, go over there and follow me because for daily photos and stuff going on in the shop because um, we've got that going on. Yeah, the Zat gun kind of looked cool. Um, I keep going there. I don't know why. I'm looking at a circuit but haven't pulled the trigger. The Halo ring is still in progress but my camera's out of alignment. That printer is doing nothing. That's the inner two. It's doing nothing. The V3 is doing nothing at the moment because I haven't started anything. This one, the webcam would load. Uh, you guys remember that uh, the, uh, you probably saw it on the channel of that really big Omega class uh, Babylon 5 battle cruiser I did. Well, this is a smaller, more detailed variant that I'm working on. So I'm hoping to have that coming. That server no longer exists. This one, hey, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be pretty close uh, for a white star. So I've kinda got that model more locked in, but it still needs some work. And the Odin 5 is working on a base. If the camera will load, I don't know why these aren't loading. Uh, that O'Neill, so that's a CR10 build plate. So that is 18 by 18 by 24 is the build plate. I'm going diagonal on it, so it's going to be fairly big. But I also blew it up. So here it is in Cura. I enlarged it. Oh no, I shrunk it. To get it to fit this is 80 percent of the normal model size to print it at one piece so i mean it's going to be big when this is 18 by 18 by 24 inches tall i'm not printing 24 it's going to be about 20 inches long by about i'd say almost 24 inches wide so it's going to be she's going to be big when she's done um, but as you can see the model oh, switch over so you guys can see the supports there's not a lot of support needed to print this model there's going to be a lot of support removal here all in all the model doesn't require a lot the most of the supports was back is in the wings and to keep it adhered to the build plate so there's not a lot being hit here so it's going to be a real pretty build So hopefully we'll have that one uh, for next week, which will be kind of fun. I, I think it'll be fun anyway. Uh, matter of fact, I need to close up my paints real quick since I'm stopped painting. 
So I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. And uh, next week, I want to start kind of working on the busts and miniatures. So, for example, you know, these nine inch Star Trek ships, I want to start working on them. Uh, the Boba Fett and the Mandalorian I showed you, I want to really start kind of digging into miniature doing that, doing that one's painting. Uh, Wraith ships. I popped over so many different things. I would almost assume they have one because I saw the Icarus. They've got the puddle jumpers. There's another Atlantis. Jaffa, Star Wars Rebel, I don't know why that one's here. The Aurora class battleship from Stargate. I don't know where that one came from. Ooh, they got a Jaffa staff weapon. That oh, looks like that might be fun. That might be a good one for the CR-30 to take on. Print it in one piece. Uh, this is the 304 model that I'm working, that I've got sitting down there ready to go on the, uh, the printer that I haven't gotten to yet. Uh... They even got Jaffa miniatures, if you're interested in that. I don't do a ton of Stargate stuff. But... Eh, I'm not sold on that Atlantis. You know, I'm not seeing any Wraith ships. There's the mount. But that doesn't mean they don't exist, so... I mean, this is just Thingiverse. You could go hit Yegi, you can go hit Cult 3D, and you'd probably be surprised what you find. This is just one site. Oh, there's a Wraith Dart. There's the fighter. A lot of BC 304s, which is the Daedalus. But, yeah, Stargate Atlantis Dart. There's another... Um, What's their name? The Asgard ships. So there's another one there. So there's definitely a lot out there. I always kind of like the O'Neill because it was, they made it and then they blew it up. <laughs> I mean, come on. They even got door handles using the Stargate. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm not seeing just the Wraith ship. So the detail on a Wraith ship would be difficult. That under the undercarriage would be would be, I think, uh, a difficult one to get. Oh, Wraith Hive. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, seeing that it's not his own comment if he's not even sure it's printable. So, and it looks kind of like a low poly detail. So that one would be one I'd avoid, but looks like there's plenty of darts. But let's go. Hey Mike, let's go to another site that I like to use. So Thingiverse is a good place to start. Cult 3D is great. You just gotta watch Cult 3D because this is a free slash pay for model site. So you, the model you're looking for may be a pay for. And we'll also see if I can spell. So Stargate Wraith. And their search is not always the best. As you can see, it's bringing in just Wraith. <laughs> Anything with the name Wraith in it. Uh, it doesn't care about if it's Stargate. So that search is going to be a difficult one. So let's take out Wraith. And let's just look at Stargate. So that Atlantis may be promising, but it's $3. There's the uh, Death Glider. It's an interesting BC-304 that's 60 bucks. Whoa. That better be a I can print perfectly every time model. Gold Hatak ship. We saw that over on the other one. Ancient shuttle. It's only three pages, so there's not a lot of Stargate here. 
rings. There's the O'Neill that's been sliced so you can print it in multiple pieces. Uh, but I'm one of those, I try to go for it all in one shot because I'm crazy. And now we're getting into like Necron figures and stuff like that. So no real success there. Yegi is another site I like to use. So it's very comprehensive, but it's also, uh, it's both. It's free and pay for. But if it's not on the site, it'll direct you to multiple sites that may have it. And we're looking at over 11 pages of possibilities. So there's one, Stargate Atlantis Race Superhive. And that scares me that there's a big hole in the middle. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, that's not good. So, this is just the, uh, the tip top of where you could search for stuff. The BC-304 is on my list. It's just not one that I've gotten to recently. I need an open printer. Oh, they even got the repli replicator ship. That's cool. But I'm definitely kind of curious to see how the Asgard ship comes out. And then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at some of the, maybe the BC-304. Ooh. I haven't done the Guardian ship yet. That might be a fun one. Let's hop over to the workspace. So and for all you guys that missed it earlier, we took the Galaxy Class Dreadnought out of support. One solid print came out really, 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 really well. So this guy's about 20 inches long, about the same wide, and about 8 inches tall. So it is definitely a beast. We got really good detail. Even the windows are all there. So some of the grid line is missing down here, but that can be painted in or uh, cut in with a uh, wood burner and a, and a bit you can draw. You can actually melt that into the model if you wanted to. I don't want to do that. So I will get most of mine in with paint. But all in all, for the detail and what we got, it came out really, really, really well. So she is a uh, definitely a beaut of a print. And we'll get that one in there. And this one will have, this one will part of, it's going to be a few weeks so that video comes up. But I'm doing just an ex, just a video set on the Galaxy class. So we're going to see some different variations on the Galaxy class. Uh, some different size and scales and a couple different models of how to print these. And I'm getting hooked on the resin 9 inch prints. So I'm going to be planning on going back and... Uh, doing one in the nine inch size. Um, probably gonna do a whole bunch in the nine inch size just because, well, I can. So then we were just having some fun of getting these Batmobiles painted. So it's kind of one of those things I'm kind of wanting to go back. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back with the yellow and get another coat in there. Uh, for me anyway, I'm gonna have to put another coat in there just for it to feel bright enough. But all in all, it came out really, really well. So and these these I'm really 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 happy with. I got to do something with the grill yet, but I'll get there. But honestly, guys, that's about all I've got for tonight. Uh, kind of one of those things. I'm kind of I'll be honest, feeling kind of run down tonight. So uh, <laughs> we'll uh, kind of just move forward here, and you guys can tell I got lots of painting, lots of work to do before the. Before, honestly, these all have to be finished before Friday. Uh, so I got a lot of work to do. But uh, does anybody have any questions or anything they want to throw out before uh, we kind of end the stream early tonight? I'm going to probably not go the full time that I usually... Well, actually, we're almost at the full time. 
15 minutes left, but I'm kind of just feeling beat, to be honest with you. So, kind of one of those things. I'll get the uh, links to the uh, to these models in the description tomorrow, and I'll also get a link for this wet palette in here. I'll get you guys some links for like the AK paints. They're out there on Amazon where you can buy them in pretty nice little sets. Um, and I think I am gonna wrap this up for tonight, guys. I think we're uh, we're in a good spot to wrap up. So I appreciate everybody showing up. It's always fun, as always, to hear you guys chat and get you guys talking, especially Batman. And I'm going to go look up this 1943 Batman, because uh, I'm curious. So, kind of looking fun forward to fun with that. So, um, guys, just so you know, I always appreciate you. If you're new to the stream, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys next time.